Okay, great. Um, so it's, uh, it's five o'clock here in the Indian Ocean, in La Réunion. So uh, I will give a very quick overview of, um, about the, the system, the couple system we are, we, we are using here for tropical cyclone modeling. So it will be really different from what I've seen so far. And it's very from the user side of the couple system. Um, so I will quickly say also, there is another reason why I'm talking today. So that will be my next slides. And I will show if some of the important application for tropical cyclones and, and how we do it in LACI. So one of the reasons I'm here is because uh, before being in La Réunion, I was working at ECMWF and, uh, and one of my favorite topic was uh, physics dynamic coupling. So I'm in the, the organization committee of another coupling workshop, which is more, uh, it's a little bit more on the physical aspect of the coupling. So between physics, but only not only the physical parameterization, but also all the geophysical component that you can couple with the uh, dynamics. Uh, so, and there has been some contact and discussions between the organization committees of the current, uh, this coupling workshop and the physics dynamic coupling workshop. And the question is that, uh, would it be a good idea to have these two workshops, let's say not merge, but one after the other. Uh, both are somehow half a week long, so maybe they could be the same week at the same place when they won't be online anymore. Uh, so the answer, so we had already discussion. The answer was that it's not a bad idea, so maybe we should try it at least at least once. And uh, so there are no final plans anyway. It's difficult currently to do any plans, so we'll see. But uh, uh, when we started to decide this, so I, I had the opportunity to be in Toulouse in March uh, when the original workshop, when the original workshop was planned. And so I, I, I wanted to, to take part to see uh, if I, we could get some, some ideas about how to couple for the best the two workshops. And so I kept this opportunity to also show some of the applications uh, we have at La Cie and in Metro France with the couple system. So what about La Cie? So where I'm working now? So as I said, it's uh, in a small island uh, just uh, south of Mauritius, a little bit west of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. And so there. I'm working in a, a joint lab between the La Réunion University, the National Research Cent French Research uh, Center, and Metro France. And one of the reasons why there is a, a research center for tropical cyclone on this small island is because uh, Metro France in La Réunion is the LSMC for tropical cyclone for the whole Southwest Indian uh, Ocean. So it's, it's responsible for the tropical cyclone forecast in these regions from 1993. And to get this responsibility, actually, you, you need to have some, some research also on, on tropical cyclone. So um, for this reason, so oh, one of the reasons also to run uh, for, yeah, Metro France is running um, uh, mesoscale models uh, operationally from 2016. So you see here is uh, all the domain of this model for the Indian Ocean, which covered, it's a quite big domain, covering all this region of responsibility uh, for the tropical cyclone forecast. So it's running every day, not only during the tropical cyclone season, four times a day, actually, there is no assimilation. So it's dynamical adaptation from the high resolution IFS uh, it's usually running for short range, 42 hours, except during the tropical cyclone season where the forecast can be extended. So the range can be extended to 78 hours. So it's running with a 2.5 kilometer horizontal resolution, 90 levels uh, to 10 hectopascal and time step of one minute. So it's not coupled yet, um, but uh, we are using a, one uh, D ocean mix layer parameterization for the time being, 
to to sim still simulate uh, some exchange with the ocean. So now I will show a few results that we uh, we we have for tropical cyclone with copper model, and then uh, I will show how we. I will summarize the different system we are using. So I won't say that's just to introduce the next slide. So one system we, we have been using at the beginning in research mode is a coupling between the research model meso and uh, and the NEMO model. So here is a, this really illustrates very well why at short range the the feedback between the ocean and the atmosphere in a tropical cyclone is, is very important. So that's the, the main thing is the cooling um, of the ocean by, by the cyclone itself and how this feedback the development of the cyclone later on. So you see that uh, with this study, so on the right is we have the cooling in the observation and then two different cases, the 3D coupling with NEMO and then the 1D coupling with the, the 1D parameterization. And you see that the, in fact, the, only the 3D coupling really represents well the extent of the coupling in, in here is only in a little bit more than 24 hours. And this feedback on the fluxes, which if you have no coupling at all, you have stronger fluxes in red and with the 3D coupling then they are much reduced in blue. So here's a result with a different system. So it's a still meso NH, but it's different ocean model called COCO, which is a bit better near the coast normally, and also a co couple with a wave model. Uh, so you, you see that on the right, the model is very good to produce this cooling, maybe a little bit too good, in fact. And one of the problem we have is that the, in this basin, there is no, there is very little observation, even less than in the, in the Atlantic or in the Pacific, uh, in tropical cyclones. So the only thing we have is are some satellites when there are not too many clouds, and you see that probably we are, we are the model is cooling a little bit too much, but we don't really know if we can trust those observations. So it's a difficult job. So, so that's why. We are working also on observations, uh, both in the atmosphere and the ocean. And we have we, uh, we have organized several campaigns, or so we will organize next year uh, new campaigns, especially with these uh, aero clippers, which are these big balloons, which are making measurements uh, just at the interface, and hopefully are kind of uh, following the flow inside the tropical cyclone. We also have a, a big project with uh sea turtle measurements so this has started last year and here just a quick example and uh, with uh, tropical cyclone Harold. so you see the the cooling of the cyclone here in black uh, that's the tropical cyclone center and in orange that's one of the sea turtle instrumented sea turtles and you see that they are this when they are diving they are producing, uh, they are sending measurements when they are coming back to the surface for uh, profiles on, uh, on, until about 80 to 100 meters. Uh, so, so that was for the coupling between the ocean and the atmosphere. So, but why do we need the wave model, the coupling with the wave model? Uh, first, of course, for the waves. So for, to, for the forecast wave, but Actually, in Metro France, most of the forecast, uh, the wave forecast is offline currently, but this may change. But we also, in fact, uh, need the waves for other aspects in the model itself. So in the flux parameterization, uh, for, for especially for very strong winds, uh, that would be a, a we, we, we hope that we could improve the surface flux parameterization thanks to, to the wave. And it's something we're working on currently. And also we know that the, the wave, uh, the, the, the sea state uh, is important to produce the marine uh, aerosols, so the sea salts 
And this is important in the coupling with the microphysics, so especially if you have a two-moment microphysics. So here's a quick example, and you see that depending on the waves you're using in your model, you can uh, get very different uh, sea salt distribution um, for in, your, in your parameterizations. So now coming back to the operational system. So as I said, it's not coupled yet, but we are working on it. Uh, and we're doing some, we just started testing. And you see that the sensitivity to the coupling, uh, to, to the way we are coupling to the ocean uh, is not, uh, doesn't, I mean, it's not the same sensitivity all the time. So here it's for tropical cyclone EDI. And two different forecasts, two days apart. And you see on the 11th, there was a strong sensitivity to the way we are coupling to the ocean. And two days later, it, it's not the case. So it's something we are investigating. But overall, for one season, uh, the results we get so far, so it's just one season, a few cyclones, but somehow it, it corresponds to what we, what we were expecting. So there's not much uh, sensitivity for the trajectory, which is mainly driven by or mainly controlled by the large scales, uh, but it has a lot of sensitivity um, for the um, the intensity of the of the cyclones. And with, of course, the when you keep the SSD constant, then you have two deep cyclones, and then probably the one D parameterization is a bit in between. And so far, the couples couple uh, run seems to be the best in terms of RMS errors, but that's only a few cyclones, so something to be confirmed. So here's the, some kind of summary of all the systems we are using at LASI. So what's important maybe for you is that we, all, all the configurations are using OASIS 3 MCT, described by Sophia at the very beginning of the workshop. Um, and also, all the atmospheric components uh, are using Surfex for uh, as the surf the Surfex platform for the surface schemes and all the flux computation. Uh, and in fact, in Surfex, so as you will see in the next slide, so we have some kind of 3D interfaces which have been re written. Uh, by, by the Surfex community to go direct to communicate with OASIS. So a lot of when you're using Surface, most of the job for the communication is done already. So depending on your atmospheric model, there is still a little bit to be done, like uh, the MPI initialization, for example, has to be uh, consistent with the fact that you're using OASIS. But uh, everything is so almost minute. ready. Yep. Yeah. So I'm on me, almost finished. Um, so there, were, there are a few complications, for example, in, in Arom, Arpeggio would be the same with the IFS. Uh, when we are using a, a second level of distribution of parallelization in the model like OpenMP, so we need to communicate with OASIS at the MPI level. So we somehow need to gather or redistribute when we are sending back um, data to, to Surfex. So this is a little bit a, li a little complication, but nothing too difficult. So we're that's the variables we are exchanging with the different components through OASIS. And just uh, I will, in the conclusion, um, say something about the the fact that for the wave model we we don't send uh, we don't send stress. We send we send the wind at ten meters. And this is something I will discuss here. So conclusion. So I, I know you, you, you surely all knew that coupling with between the three component ocean wave and atmosphere is very important for uh, tropical cyclones. I hope you're fully convinced now. In case you were not, uh, at last see. So we are using different ocean. Diff uh, we are using for the timing only one wave model, but others may we may try others and and several atmospheric. Uh, code, but they are all coupled using the OASIS 3 MCT coupler, uh, which actually is very cheap. And in fact, what cost in our configuration is always the atmosphere. Uh, all atmospheric components are using Surfex, which 
makes your life um, much easier because everything is almost ready for coupling. So this configuration is used at Classy, but this is shared by uh, many other uh, centers and, and lab uh, in France, but also in the Irla Maladin Consortium. It's also used now in Mercator Ocean. Uh, we still have a few technical problems still to, to solve, like, for example, uh, the I.O. server, they don't, the different I.O. servers in different models don't uh, work well together, but this is something we have to, to see. And then finally, it's a topic which maybe would rather be discussed in a PDC workshop but, uh, or some common day between the two workshops. So we, we realized that there is some lack of consistency in the way the drag is computed in both the atmospheric model and the web model. Actually, it's computed twice with two different uh, schemes, and probably this is not very good in terms of consistency and conservation of uh, momentum. So it's something we also want to, to see and see if we can change that. So I was wondering if there is any norm or if there are already been discussion about what kind of variables would be exchanged. And finally, back to my first point. So if you have any thinking or opinion about uh, the coupling between the physics dynamic workshop and this coupling workshop, please come back to us and something we, we are happy to, to have your opinion about that. Thank you.